I'll tell, I'll tell myself, you know, you know. I'll tell, I'll tell myself, you know. I'll be your biggest fan. I'll tell myself. Hello, this is Aaron Kupferberg from Power Popaholic. Today we're talking with musical artist Graham Alexander. How are you doing today, Graham? Hey, how are you, Aaron? How's it going? Good. Um, I read in your bio um, that you play alongside several of my favorite bands as well uh, as your own, uh, like Badfinger. Uh, what's it like? Did you play with the band or just on stage after or... Uh, when when I was in uh, when I was in when I was touring England, maybe maybe six years ago, uh-huh. uh, Joy Molland, you know, at that point, well, I mean, let's see, when it, I guess if Joy Molland was uh, playing in front of a band that I was playing in, and um, he was calling his band Badfinger, so that that's the extent, obviously, <laughs> right? So, um, but. Uh, but yeah, no, that was really cool because I just love those songs and 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 play with the to be able to say you know at the very least that you play with Badfinger was was pretty neat it was fun. Cool, cool, and also um I, I another band I really like, Grace Potter and the Nocturnals. They're they're really a hard working band. Uh, did, what was yeah. it like hanging out with them? They're a great band. They are, if not one of the only true rock and roll bands that I've personally thought were, I mean, they're just, they're just a band, you know what I mean? There's not that, there aren't that many of those these days, like there used to be. Right, cool. Actually, you let, let me step back a little bit. Um, you got a lot of your stage experience on Broadway as the lead in Rain, which was the Beatles tribute, uh, and you were, you were playing Paul in front of screaming fans in full Beatlemania mode. How's that for training? I mean, you know, what, what was that whole experience like for you in the beginning? Um, well, I don't know if I got most of my experience there because I, I was touring for about six or seven years before I, I did that. Right. Um, but but the Broadway show was uh, just, it was awesome. It was a lot of fun. I mean, how much fun, I mean, you get to be a Beatle and then you get paid for it and it's a great, you know, it's a, it's a Broadway show. So you got the, all that acting skill and, and um, you really got to hone different, just sort of different things that, that not a lot of musicians have the opportunity to hone on. Yes, and you know another great musician who got his start um, playing John in the 70s version of uh, Beatlemania? Marshall. That's right, Marshall Crenshaw. And, and he went on to great things as well, so I expect you to as well. This new album you have, uh, out uh, actually it's been out a year or so now, it's really impressive. Um, I was blown away by it. Um, w- one question and related to the song "Don't Give In Tonight." Did uh, did you ever get any feedback from Jessica Alba? <laughs> um, you know, I don't know if she's ever heard it or not. But um, you know, it's so, it's such a funny thing. I, I don't know if um, I don't I don't even know what it means really. I think the whole song started with that line at one point because I thought it was such a funny line. It just had a sort of a weird poetic flow to it. Uh, that was that was oddly contemporary. I try to avoid contemporary subjects because, let's face it, contemporary subjects go away. Right. You know, it's kind of like, it's kind of like I, I don't know if I'll ever say, you know, anything about Facebook or texting on, you know, in a song, you know, because that dates it kind of. But I don't know. I think I think one thing that's really neat about her, I guess, is that um, she's. Uh, She's just a, a sort of a businesswoman and a mom, and she's so that's kind of what makes her interesting is that she's not really a um, she's not like Lindsay Lohan. She's not you know right. Not, not that it, you know not that it would have mattered. I don't think I would have done the line if I didn't think it just it just had a nice flow and it just sounded funny. <laughs> right. Tell me a little bit about uh, how you came up with the song "Biggest Fan." Uh, it was actually one of the last songs that we recorded. Uh, for the album and um, really I, I sat down in frustration because we couldn't figure um, we just I didn't feel like there was a single yet that I that I felt positive about and 
I sat down and, and I'm, I'm left handed. Uh, so mm-hmm. when I play piano, my left hand is very, uh, it's like the dominant hand, which right. is really strange. Um, so I was doing this sort of um, exercise that sort of makes a rumba on the low end of the bass notes and it just sort of came from a, of the the way it was played on the keyboard and then I finished it um, within a couple of weeks I mean it was it was the very tail end of that, of that uh, all the sessions wow it's a great it's a great tune it's a perfect single for you um, yeah, yeah and uh, I really like it now um, let me get back for, I understand also from your bio that your father was a musician too Mm-hmm. And did he sort of encourage you to become a musician, or you sort of saw what he was doing and said, "Hey, I kind of like this." Um, actually, my parents they split up. Um, like when I was, I don't know, maybe like seven, and and I really wasn't too into music yet. And and really, what happened was, um, I I got a VHS tape <laughs> of. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was called uh, the the Complete Beatles. Do you remember that documentary? Yes, I do. And I saw that, and um, that just made me want to play guitar. I wanted to I wanted to uh, write songs. I thought that was great, and and it never stopped. It just lit a fire, and the fire never went out. Um, wow. Fortunately or unfortunately for some. No, I think <laughs> it was uh, most fortunate because I think uh, it's great that that sort of latched on to you and, and uh, you know and it sort of works its way within you as, as you not yeah. only love the Beatles but you get to play a Beatle after a while it, it just sort of becomes part of your DNA after a while I know that a lot of artists feel that way uh, who have basically started out listening to the Beatles got their first you know taste of right. great melodies from them um, and, and I think it's the same with with you as well um, what what type of um, band was your was your dad dad in a was he a touring person or did he stay in a particular band or you don't know uh no he was in a band um a, a, a really uh, great band one of my favorite bands even if he wasn't in it a band called the hooters oh um, yes yeah and and he played bass in that band and so when i was really young i was always around songwriting i mean i remember the song um do you remember joan osborne's one of us Yes. And that song came out. I remember I remember before that song came out, that was a Hooters song because Eric Bazilian wrote the song. Right. And and they were gonna record it for their record and then eventually it just kind of um I guess it went to Joan. But I remember it coming in on a, a cassette tape. Uh Incredible. You know, to the house and, and hearing all that and, and time after time and, and um so I, I was always it was really cool. I was really privileged to hear some of the some really amazing tunes coming through and, and being associated. My, my, it's so funny. Ironically, mm-hmm. if you know Marshall Crenshaw, then you must know Glenn Burtnick. Yes. Uh, and Glenn and my dad were in a band called uh, were the house the house band for the Stone Pony in Jersey. Right. And and so they knew each other before Glenn ever went to the the Beatlemania and before Glenn ever met Marshall. Wow. So I was always hearing Glenn's songs, and I was always hearing Eric's songs and, and Rob's songs, and and so it was cool. It was a lot of fun, um, wow. and it was really influential because those guys have, um, you know, a, a lot of Eric's uh, to my ears influences are like Dylan, and so I, I I'm a big huge Dylan fan. I'm a big huge everything fan. All sorts of really really strange stuff that's really varying. <laughs> Great. Well, I mean, that this probably helps you with you know working on songs of your own and songwriting. Um, yeah. When, when you're putting together a song, do you think of lyrics and melody first, or does a story come to mind, or is it a little bit of both? A little bit of both. Uh, it depends. Um, sometimes I'll just I'll be playing and I'll hear something that I really uh, think is you know that I enjoy, or uh, the, the the strangest concepts. Uh, you, you'll be walking down the street and it'll say let them eat cake on a sign you know mm-hmm. and that's it's like it, it, something as small as a little phrase can start an entire song for me personally wow well also let, let's uh, move ahead a little bit now I saw a clip on YouTube you playing on The Price is Right with Drew Carey and the whole oh. band uh, what was that like well that was promo for the Broadway show okay uh, 
Yeah, when the Broadway show, um, you know, when they give away, like, prizes, and it was hilarious. You know, you, first of all, you show up there, mm-hmm. and, you know, it, it, it seems like a huge stage um, when you're at your house. But when you show up there, it's about, I don't know, it's got to be 60 people in the audience. So it's very tiny, and then you play. And Drew was the nicest guy in the world, a big, uh, big music fan and a big Beatles fan, and eventually came to the Broadway show. And so they offered us as a prize. I guess you get to fly to New York. Okay, and, and see Rain. And, yeah, and, and, and go see the Rain show on Broadway. And um, he, uh, you know, it was, it was very funny because they wanted, us to, they wanted a couple of people to say lines. And I'll never forget, I'll never forget somebody, Drew, or, or maybe one of the producers said, well, could you introduce this, this next prize part of the showcase? It's a Porsche Boxster. And I just couldn't do it. I just thought it was too funny, and I just, I just laughed. I couldn't even. I just walked away. I had to have somebody else do it. It was so. It was ridiculous sounding. You know, you've never heard a Beatle say anything about a Porsche Boxster. Right, and I noticed that if, when they sort of talked to the band afterwards, you were the quiet one. <laughs> I know, and it's funny because you know, if you'd ever seen the show, the show is very. Um, the acting is mostly on the Paul character. It was for that show, and so. Um, I was happy to not talk. I, I don't, you know, I, I think, I think um, uh, it's very strange, very strange talking. Uh, I find it very strange to talk in general, but... <laughs> All right, well, tell me a little bit about uh, what's coming up with you. I mean, um, you know, we, we've got this album, we, people have had this album for the year, and uh, are you, you're working on a new project as well? Yeah, we're doing the next record. Awesome. Um, I'm, I'm trying to do a bunch of, I mean, I like so much, um, so many different things. We're working on, um, we're working on a concert film that we're preparing for, we're preparing to do uh, at a theater right outside of Philadelphia. And, um, and then we're working on really the next album. And the next album is uh, just sort of a, it's, it's basically... Mm, I don't know. It's, it's it's songwriting. You know, I don't know if there's any way to describe the next album. I always, I always think it's funny when they ask Lady Gaga, you know, wh- what's your next album going to be about? And she gives some coded answer like, love and dance music, baby. <laughs> it's like, okay. You know, I, I don't, you know, that's such a funny thing to say. I mean, God bless her, but uh, I don't know how people can say, you know, like, you know, Anything but. It's going to be an album. Well, what's the, what's the timeline for it right now? Um, probably within six months. All right, all right. We're yeah, looking forward and I'm to really it. looking forward to it. I'm really looking forward to it because, you know, when we play live, we play, you know, a bunch of songs from. Um, I, I've been touring with the same band for like ten years. I've been playing out with these guys, and what's funny is, we tend to um, when we do songs for the album. It's like, we just wish there was a much larger catalog to choose from. And there will be after the second album. Because we've got albums that we put out when we were younger. Right. And so we do some of those. But we all, you know, but, but for the most part, we do stuff promoting this album. You know, you tend to do songs when you're promoting the album. And then, and then everything else kind of falls by the wayside a bit. Right, you know? right. All right. Well, I, I look forward to that. Um, it was awesome talking with you. And, uh, you know, uh, keep going, and we'll be looking forward to that next album uh, later this year. Thank you so much, Graham Alexander. Thank you, Aaron. See ya. All right, take care.